Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with an assembly video for one of our die sets. This is die number 1254, the Raising Platform Pop-Up, and you can check out all of our die designs at karenberniston.com. Okay, I am going to remake the card that is on the packaging for this die set, and I am just going to change out the colors. You choose your card size, but for this one I made an A2 portrait style card. So I started with a piece of cardstock, eight and a half inches long by five and a half inches tall, and scored it in the middle for folding. And then to decorate the inside, I just added panels of pattern paper that are slightly smaller. So I went stash diving, found a cool piece of photo play pattern paper that had birthday cakes on it to use for my new version. Okay, I die cut the mechanism for the raising platform. I used a lightweight white cardstock. So this is one of those mechanisms where lightweight is fine. The top of it is what it looks like an L. And then it's got all of those score lines in it. Now I'm going to go ahead and sketch in the score lines on the tall part of the L because those will all be hidden anyway. Of course, since I'm using pencil, I also could just erase them, but I'm going to draw those in for the video so you can see where they are. But then over here on the L section, I'm not going to draw them because I would have to erase them because they'll be visible. So on the L portion, there's a mountain fold up the middle and mountain folds for the two little triangle tabs. So that's easy enough. And then I'm going to bring those back to where they started. Okay, then these other ones, it doesn't really matter which way you fold them. They'll all get fixed, you know, when it gets installed inside the card. So whichever way feels easiest to fold those folds, go ahead and find them all. So I'm just folding away from myself because it, it seems to like that, but I could fold towards myself. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go up the middle on this one, and then those little triangle tabs, I'm just going to fold them to the back. Okay, and then I'm just going to bring everything back out to flat again. All right, these two sections here are going to be the ones that glue inside the card. So I can go ahead and put my X's on that. That's going to be glued down. I will not see those pencil lines. So I'm going to flip it over so it's a backwards L. And I'm going to glue those two panels down. Now I need to figure out how far down my card it needs to go. Now the instructions say that to hide the label that comes with it inside a card, my suggestion is you go two and a half inches down at least. You can obviously go further down, but two and a half inches will hide that label pretty nicely inside a card. Okay, flipping my piece over so I can see my X panels, I like a strong glue for this. So I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We sell both of those items on our website. And you can see I'm coating the X panels with adhesive. And then I'm going to flip it over to the backwards L position. And then I want that corner right there to go on my pencil line. And then the slit that is up the middle is just going to go right over the fold. So right there, I can see the fold right through that open area of the mechanism. And my two X panels are now glued down. And my pencil line is right there at that corner. Next, I'm going to work with that small triangle tab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it on the diagonal so that it comes up and sits on top like this. And then I'm going to add my glue all over that triangle. Okay, let me show that a little closer. So I've got glue on my triangle tab that I'm going to keep it flat while I fold the mechanism up and over and onto that triangle tab. And everything is going to line up now. So I've got a front mechanism and a back mechanism, kind of two towers there. They're laying flat right now. And now I want to get them into the popped up position. So this back one, I'm going to kind of pinch the side so it starts to become a mountain like the front one up the middle. And then I'm going to start to close the card a little bit while I put my finger in the fold so that I can bring that back mechanism up. So you can see it's going to fold on those diagonals just like the front one is doing. And then you're going to have parallel mechanisms that are both coming up at the same time. Just like that. This die set checks all the boxes because it's quick, easy, and generic. There are four triangle tabs that are going to hold the label on at the top of the pop-up. So I'm just going to add my X's to those four triangle tabs. The die set includes a large label that will fit on top of that pop-up. It's got a decorative double stitch line, but no score line up the middle. And that way you can use that as a flat label when you want to use it on projects. So it's easy enough to fold up the middle for when it goes on the pop-up. If you'd like there to be a layer, then I would suggest doing that first. So that could be the oval or the smaller label that comes in the set, but use lightweight materials for that. So I've used a very lightweight white cardstock. You could use paper. The thinner, the better, really, because you're folding through two layers. So the first thing I'm going to do is just glue those two labels together, and I'm just kind of lining up the points to get it all centered. And of course, if I wanted to stamp that or something, I would do that before folding. But when I'm ready to fold, I can either just fold it manually by hand because I can just line up the two edges of the label, or I can get out something like a scoring board 
take the point of the label and just get it in one of the rivers, make sure that the bottom point is in the same river, and then just score down through the whole piece. So either way, folding it by hand or folding it with a score line works. And then that is going to be a valley fold. So I need to make sure that it goes, you know, valley. But I like to actually fold it back and forth a few times because then it gets the fold looser. Because the looser the fold on the top of that pop-up, the easier it's going to open up for you. Okay, now it's time to add that label to those X tabs. So I'm just going to throw a little sticky note behind the front X tabs just so it's easier to see. So I'm just coating those X tabs with my strong glue. Then I'm going to do the same thing with the back too. So just stopping at the score line and getting a strong adhesive on all four of those X tabs. Okay, and then what I want to do is I want to attach my label so that the fold in the label goes right up the center. I can look at the point and make sure it's lined up with the fold on the mechanism and then just make sure I'm covering those four X tabs. So see that line just goes straight up through the label and those tabs are attached to the back. Once I feel like the glue has set up enough, then I can start to close the card. And what I like to do is just take the edges of the label and kind of pinch them into that valley fold as I close the card. And then I can give it a really good press. And you know, you can check, maybe a triangle tab kind of popped off in that process and you may have to go back in there with your glue and get it back on again. But you should see it that all four of the triangles are attached on either side of the fold on that label. So here's why you really need that two and a half inches at least from the top of the card when you place your mechanism so that that label is hidden in the closed position. And like I say, you can always lower it, lower in the card, give yourself a little bit more room. The die set includes decorator pieces that can be used on that mechanism. So that's completely optional, but just as decorative touch, you can add pieces to kind of make those a little two-tone. That'll leave a little shadow of your original cardstock color around them. Now, those of you who have been collecting dies for decades, you may recognize this mechanism. I did have a version of this die called the Racing Platform Pop-Up with Sizzix way back in 2012. And it was a steel rule die and it had just the mechanism part and a label. So it has been re-engineered a bit because one thing that I didn't like about that old version was how I always seem to be adding staples or brads to keep it glued inside the card. It always wanted to pop off of there. I re-engineered it to be a lot easier on the assembly and a lot smoother on the operation. And then now, of course, you get those decorator pieces. You do not have to add the decorator pieces to the back pop-up. That's really just completely optional, but those same pieces will fit it. If you do think that you want to add those decorator pieces to the back assembly, you could certainly do that before you finish putting the whole bottom mechanism together. So right after you glue the base into the card, you could go in and just add your decorator pieces to that back mechanism. However, it's easy enough to just reach in there and do it afterwards as well. Okay, the other pieces that come included in this die set are completely decorative. You can use them or not use them. You can pull them out and use them on other projects. There is a larger star. I've used double-sided adhesive on the back of my cardstock before die cutting so that that's a sticker. There's a cool little swirly do, which I cut out of glitter paper. And then what I like to do if I'm going to suspend my swirly do with the star on it is just go ahead and put two stars back to back around the end of the swirly do. And that just gives it a little bit of extra strength since it's going to be kind of hanging out over air. There is also a die in the set that will cut four small stars. So those are sized to where they will fit perfectly on the big one when you want to layer them or you can use them on their own. Once again, I just put the double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the cardstock before die cutting so that they are stickers. Now, depending on where I put my platform makes a difference in where I can put my swirly do. Basically, I'm using up all of the space at the top. I have no space to have that suspended at the top. So I'm going to have to go from the side and just make sure that the star doesn't go any higher than the label itself. So just kind of picking the parts of the swirly do that will touch the label and then choosing a nice pleasing angle. And then I have to check it to make sure it stays in the card. And you can see it's just kind of barely. So I may even want to like squish it in just a little bit before my glue sets up. And the double-sided adhesive tape on the back of the cardstock, that's definitely just a time saver, but it is optional. So it just makes them into stickers where I can just easily put all my stars on the platform but if I didn't have access to that tape, I would just use my glue. So I just covered the base of the pop-up with those stars, small and large, and then I'm going to add another swirly do on the platform itself. And I'm just gonna kind of match the angle of the fold because then that star is gonna be able to kind of flip over into that closed position. So just watch your angle on that, that it's not at such an extreme angle that it crashes into the card. 
I've been matching the measurements of my inspiration card, and this was a two inch piece, so I cut that pattern paper at two inches, but actually I kind of don't want to cover up so much of the birthday cakes. So I'm going to take my trimmer and actually trim that down to an inch and a half. So, you know, everything from here is just decorative, but in case you wanted to make this exact card, I made those inch and a half since my background paper was just so visually pleasing. If you want to put a greeting on the raising platform, our small word sets are the perfect choice. So I'm going to use word set to birthday. And then to give my words a little shine, I'm going to add some clear packing tape to my black cardstock before die cutting. So just kind of a cool way to give some shine to the cardstock. Now what I like about the small word sets is that they're very easy to curve the words. So I'm going to take birthday here and curve it into a pleasing arc. And then I'm looking to place those words on the raising platform so that the fold that's in the label is going to cross the words at a skinny part of the letter. So I'm going to choose the H and the P there. And I don't have the, the tall part right over the fold. I have that just next to the fold. And that way the letters only have to fold on a very thin part of those letters. So if you can put things on the raising platform that avoid the fold, that's great because then you don't have to try and work the fold into your decorations, but things like these small words, that will work great. The other die I'm going to use for decorations is the cupcake add-ons. So this die set is sized to work with our landscape rectangle accordion, but you can absolutely use those cupcakes on their own. Those labels that come included in the raising platform pop-up also work great on their own as flat elements. It can be used as a horizontal set or a vertical. I'm going to do vertical and then just add one of those cupcakes in the center. So I glue that element inside the card and then I'm going to add another one of those swirly dews and stars and then just put a pop dot underneath the star. And then I finish out the card's interior with the oval that comes in the set. That's where I can sign the card and then a few of those small stars. And then for the front of the card, I am just going to absolutely copy the inspiration card, but with the new colors. So I've already assembled the cupcakes onto the shadow piece. It does have that tab, which I won't need. That's for when I'm using it with the landscape rectangle accordion. But actually this whole piece is gonna be wider than the four inch piece of paper that I have. So what I'll do is I will just attach my cupcake set to that paper and then just cut off the excess. Okay, and then I'm going to add my celebrate word just below the cupcakes on the right hand side. Then I've got a couple more glittery swirly dues, so I'll just attach those to this piece. Now that piece is ready for the front of the card. Now what I wanted for a background was the birthday cakes paper, but I only had one sheet and I'd already kind of chopped it all up and I didn't have in what was left a piece that was the right size for the front of the card as a single piece. But knowing that I had that big wide border to go through the middle, I just planned it so that there was a gap in the paper in the middle and then that celebrate piece would cover it. So just a way to stretch my leftover so that I could still get the illusion that I had a full piece of paper behind there. And then the last bit of decoration is just to add a couple of those layered stars at the end of the swirly dues. There are very few styling differences between these two cards other than just choosing different colors. I did choose to use cherries on the cupcakes for my new version because red was one of the colors of my paper. Whereas in the original, I didn't have any red, so I decided just to use glitter stars on the cupcakes. My finished card is A2 size, so it will fit in an A2 envelope. It does fold down pretty flat, so I don't anticipate it needing any extra postage. The raising platform pop-up is so generic, it can be used for any theme. And I love to end assembly videos with some wonderful inspiration by our talented design team. This first card is from Nikki, thinking of you, get well soon. And I just love how she decorated everything with those fun flowers. And notice her strategic word placement around the fold. Next are two Valentine's cards by Suzanne. And I love what she's done. She's traded out the label for a bigger item. So in this first one, she made a large Polaroid frame and then decorated it with smaller Polaroid frames filled with our animal dyes, the camera from the memory charms. And then for her second card, she used a large heart. And then to that large heart, she decorated it with little candy hearts that were cut from our new candy hearts box die set. Next up is a Christmas idea from Sue. What she did is she used our large topper tags die set to make a card. And then she used the raising platform and suspended some ornaments off of greenery that's attached to the raising platform. So the whole thing raises up and that's possible because she has that wide card to hide that wide item.
The racing platform is slimline friendly. So you're going to see a couple ideas here using the racing platform in a slimline card. This first one by Lois. I like how she used the photorealistic paper and then just added die cuts to the scene. Here's a New Year's card by Sandy. This one she's used two inside a slimline card and had them go the opposite directions from each other. So you can really mess around with multiples in your taller cards. Here's one by Lois. Again, a double, this time both going in the same direction. There are just so many possibilities and combinations with this die set, so it's really fun to just explore what you can do with it. Francis made two slimline Merry Christmas cards, so this first one uses a single raising platform, and the second one adds the stocking at the bottom, so multiple pop-ups in the same card. Jen shows off her wonderful coloring skills with this castle-themed birthday card, and she's used the raising platform to lift up the dragon. This Christmas card by Nikki is beautiful in all of the golds and metallics with snowflakes dangling off the racing platform. And this card by Nikki is so clever and festive. The racing platform lifts up the upper part of the tree up and out of the card. The Raising Platform pop-up die set is available now at a lot of your favorite local and online retailers, as well as from our website, KarenBurniston.com. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenburniston.com where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.